everyone, welcome to Enquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. Welcome to the third part of the Choir Vocal Technique series here on Enquire to Choir YouTube channel. After talking about the theory of it and then all about the breath, seriously, that video is 40 minutes long. <laughs> Today we talk about the infamous choir topic, choir warm-up. I divided this topic into three videos. This is the first one where we talk about the choir warm-up in general and I give you an idea how to design your own choir warm-up. For the longest time I thought there was a secret club of all the people who know how to warm up a choir officially. Because the way I was doing my choir warm-ups was just repeating all the choir warm-ups my previous choir directors did in choirs where I was a singer. It was a mix of all the vocal exercises and drills I knew from them. I didn't know you could do your own thing or do a different warm-up and it didn't even occur to me as an idea. However, after some time I realized choir warm-ups are an endless possibility. There are better ways to do it, but most importantly, there is a certain kind of logic behind them. And this part of the choir practice can evolve constantly, while being the key part of what makes your choir sound better. Plus, you can tailor them by your choir's needs and preferences. There is no secret club. All choir directors and vocal coaches collect this knowledge throughout their careers and the years of experience. And then they create an assembly of things that prove to work for them. Let's get started. Why do we warm up? To warm up our voices to be able to sing better. That is correct. But it's not just about that, especially when it comes to choirs. First of all, it's a ritual. Choir warm-ups come at the beginning of the rehearsal. The warm-up announces the beginning of a choir rehearsal and signals that from that moment on, your singers have to have a special kind of concentration and focus. It's an important psychological moment. It shifts the possibly chaotic energy of the room that came out from all of your singers arriving to the rehearsal and saying hello to each other and you, as the choir director, at that moment, take the wheel. So it's important to take it seriously, and by that I mean it's an important part. Don't be fickle about it. The way you approach your choir warm-ups sets the tone for the whole rehearsal. You can gain a lot of your choir's trust by the way you approach your choir warm-ups. I can attest to that because the choir president of the mixed choir I have been working with for the past six and a half years said to me that the reason why I passed the audition and the reason I got the job was the way I approached the choir warm-ups. I showed that I know what I'm talking about. As a juxtaposition to that, I had been in a situation where I am a singer in an ensemble and my ensemble director never did a proper warm-up if any warm-up at all. This person thought that it was a waste of time. This was really frustrating because I experienced firsthand how painful it can be when you can't reach a certain tone you want to reach because you never did a proper warm-up and then being called out for it. To avoid further critique, I started warming up by myself before the rehearsal at home which, in my opinion, is a situation my ensemble director should never have put me in. I lost my respect for this director and I stopped singing in that ensemble. Not to mention, not doing any kind of warm-up or doing a very bad version of a warm-up can be really dangerous. Maybe we are not wearing leg warmers while we do our choir warm-up, but there is a reason why warming up is the key part of every exercise. You have to be warmed up to reduce the risk of being injured. 
when you do a physical workout, you warm up your whole body and you do a warm up exercise for every part of the body by doing a compound exercise or a dedicated exercise for a particular muscle. This analogy works for choir warm ups. Singing requires using your whole body, the accent being on your abdomen, chest, and throat. In the first video, we also talked about the fact that you teach your choir vocal technique during the warm-up. There is a fine line between a vocal warm-up exercise and a vocal drill exercise. Doing vocal drills can be fun, but for a choir, not all the time and not for very long. They want to sing better, but honestly, I believe you know from your experience that you don't always have the time to work on vocal technique when you barely have the time to read all the new scores you have to learn for the concert that's coming up. Plus, most of the time when you're working on vocal technique, your singers tend to think they wasted precious time because they attended the rehearsal but didn't sing real music. However, singing without warming up is almost impossible in your choir singers' minds. They don't want to sing without the choir warm-up. So the choir warm-up is the perfect opportunity to work on the technique as well. Be persistent and make it habitual. I'm not only saying that you should do it every rehearsal. I'm also saying you should always do it in a certain way. That doesn't mean you always have to do the same vocal exercises every time by any means. In fact, I'm strongly against that. Mostly, it becomes boring even for the choir director to do always the same vocal exercises. But the way you do it should become something that your choir is familiar with, something that they know how to do. You don't always have to explain it from the very beginning. It has to be logical to them, so it becomes second nature. It is illogical to make them sing a quick rhythmic exercise if they haven't even taken a full breath with their belly yet. It's illogical to sing a very open vowel like ah uh, if they haven't sung the very narrow vowel like ooh because the ah requires more muscles to be warmed up. Every vocal exercise has a form, a tonal structure, and a specific purpose. This is something you have to be aware of. We will talk about every vocal exercise there is in detail and in depth in the next video, so stay tuned. Planning your warm-up in a logical way and doing it habitually to this kind of logic makes the repetition factor in this do wonders. With time, the amount of exercise it will take to, for example, open their throats will decrease. Planning it this way requires knowing vocal technique theory knowing your choir's needs, your choir's problems, weak spots, and the repertoire you are currently working on. When you look at the choir piece you are currently singing, can you point out what the most difficult parts are in general and especially for your choir? Which bars, which voices? For example, maybe the sopranos have to go extra high in this particular piece, which they are not used to. Why not try to work on that during the warm-up? Or if you notice that a certain pitch, a certain tone is always out of tune a little bit for your choir, why don't you work on that, on the range around that pitch during the warm-up? My point is, if you want to do a better push-up, you don't always have to do push-ups. You can work on your arms, for example. During the choir warm-up, you can dedicate the time to solve a particular issue your choir is having. And these issues always change. So, the vocal exercises change. That's what I mean by saying that you can tailor the choir warm-up to your choir's needs. Now let's go to the technical terms. How long should the warm-up last? This is subjective, of course. It depends on how long your rehearsal is. I will say for a two-hour rehearsal, the choir warm-up is 
15 minutes. I do it for 15 minutes. It's not too long, it's not too short. I have enough time to do everything I want with it. If I recognize that my choir is in need of working on their vocal apparatus more, because they lack the stamina, for example, or we have a certain problem we have to work on, or during the planning of the rehearsals, I noticed that for this particular rehearsal, I don't have as much work I usually have. I go up to 30 minutes of warming up. So 15 minutes in general, seldomly 30 minutes, but never less than 10 minutes. I would advise you never to go under 10 minutes, even if your rehearsal is one hour long. The thing is, if you skip the warm-up, this is going to prolong getting the better sound quality during the rehearsal. So you end up losing time instead of getting more time, which you thought you were doing by cutting the warm-up. It's better to warm up efficiently, and you can really do that in 10 minutes, because then your whole rehearsal becomes better. This rule has one exception in my way of thinking, because I know that at certain points before a big concert or a big performance, you don't always have the amount of time you want to have for a proper choir warm-up. When we are preparing for a certain performance, I will do one rehearsal without any kind of warm-up because they need to feel the psychological effect of that. I would advise you to do that once, maybe twice. Many rehearsals apart if you're doing it twice. When I skip the warm-up, I tell them, listen, today we're going to skip the warm-up, but that means that you are responsible for your vocal apparatus and you have to be aware how you're working with your vocal cords, for example, much more than you're used to because today you are not properly warmed up. I want them to be in a situation where they feel the lack of preparation because you never know before a concert if you have enough time or actually if you even have a place where you can warm up. And this is the only exception. Additionally, when they're doing the warm-up, when they're singing, please take notice of what's going on. Because if you listen to the warm-up very intentionally, you can figure out where the choir sounds its best, what the timbre is at every key, where things become difficult, in what vocal range, and by the way, this particular warm-up, you can attend to the next choir warm-up. It's not a fixed situation. You can think of it as a plan. You can plan the choir warm-up to gradually become tougher and tougher. Plus, if you pay attention to what your choir sounds like during the warm-up and how their energy is, you can tell a lot about how the rehearsal is going to be. So yeah, I'm a big, big cheerer for choir warm-ups. A big part of choir warm-ups is the accompaniment it comes with. If you don't have the conditions to use an instrument, preferably a piano, my advice would be to try to work on that. I'm not saying an a cappella warm-up is not a good way. Sometimes it can be very beneficial, but a choir needs a firm unifying factor, a stable music surrounding to be able to stay in tempo, to stay motivated, to stay active, and to stay in tune. You know how it is. One person tends to drift off, everybody follows. <laughs> Plus, because they sing multi-part songs, it's important for them to hear the harmonic structure which the piano can give them and to get used to it without actually being aware that they're listening to it. If you can't play the piano or are not comfortable or confident enough to play the choir warm-up, First of all, you can ask one of your choir members who can play the piano to do that for you. There is nothing shameful about that. It will score points for you if you ask someone from the choir. That choir member will probably be very happy to help and to be 
a bit of in the center of attention. And obviously it solves the problem for you. If you don't have that option, take a few lessons. I know it sounds like, what are you talking about? It's too hard, but it's actually not. Before you start going at me, the third video in this choir warm-up series is about that, how to do the piano accompaniment for choir warm-up. So you will have that in a couple of weeks. But don't be scared of taking a few lessons and trying to learn that because it's not so complicated. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's not so complicated that you cannot work on it or at least try. Tonal structure and range. Here is the truth. All the time, but especially for the choir warm up, you have to know the specifics of your choir's vocal range. I have to say it changes because you get new people, all singers leave the choir, things happen, you have to be aware of it. So the first thing you have to do when you're thinking about doing a choir warm-up is to figure out and to define your choir vocal range. Two things you need to know. The lowest note your choir can sing and the highest note your choir can sing. In between is the vocal range of your choir. But you have to know this for every part specifically. So the soprano range, the alto range, the tenor range, the bass range. That's not the only thing you have to know. You have to know the lowest and the highest notes of what your choir can sing comfortably with ease, the lowest and the highest, every vocal part and the choir in general. When you know all this, you find the middle ground. The middle ground being usually the middle C. The middle C is the center C on the piano keyboard, which is C4 in Anglo-Saxon world and the C1 in European. You start your choir warm-up by covering the range they feel comfortable in. So, for example, you start from the middle C, you take a vocal exercise and you repeat it many times, going semitone by semitone higher until you reach the highest tone they can sing comfortably. Beware, you have to think about the tonal structure of the exercise you are at. If in the exercise you go a fifth up, for example, la 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 the highest note is la if your choir's highest comfortable note is an e the last key you can perform this exercise is in a major because it's a e a not the e major because then it's e b which is totally unreachable take this into consideration now you've covered the comfortable range and you travel down semitone by semitone and arrive back to the middle C. Then you go to the next exercise and next exercise and you go through all the exercises you have planned for that rehearsal. But for each exercise you do, you expand a bit more until at the end of your choir warm-up or in the last part of your choir warm-up, you covered all the range they can sing. Three things. During the warm-up, you can say only the altos or just sopranos and tenors. It's not forbidden. Just because you're working the choir warm-up for everyone doesn't mean that all the singers have to sing all the time. So it goes without mention, but I will mention it anyway. Uh, sopranos and altos are an octave above basses and tenors, okay? So when I say the middle C, that is true for sopranos and altos, maybe even the tenors, but the basses go an octave below. In general, it is assumed that your choir singers are using their common sense and you don't have to repeat that to them all the time. They have to sing in the octave their voice is. I hope that's clear. Thing number three, if you are not familiar with ranges, with uh, vocal ranges of your choir, of voices in general, I will refer you to this video. 
but start with the breathing not with singing with breathing you start your choir warm-up with breath exercises you have plenty of them in the previous video this works wonders if you say to your choir at the beginning of the rehearsal breathe in breathe out you have their attention they will immediately focus and start the rehearsal which is what you want and before they make the first sound their body will be connected faster if not immediately in a completely correct way additionally before singing with words you can start by humming and with lip rolls then go to the standard vocal exercise so now we talked about that club you can find me in the club yes you can design your own choir warm-up i already mentioned every vocal exercise has a specific purpose you do as many of them as you wish but you have to connect them in a way that is useful for your choir during your choir warm-up you should do vocal exercise that cover certain purposes my suggestion what i think covers most of the vocal apparatus problems and needs are singing from narrower sounds to more open sounds singing notes of the same pitch singing notes in scale singing notes with jumps for example a third a fifth and eight upwards and downwards singing gradually from shorter tones to singing long tones singing slow notes singing quick notes singing simple tonal structures singing complex tonal structures singing from piano dynamics to forte dynamics alternating or by doing crescendos and decrescendos singing legato singing staccato multi-part singing think of all of these purposes as topics and you cover the topics by doing certain vocal exercise every vocal exercise has a design a purpose a tonal structure every vocal exercise can cover multiple of these purposes so you learn a new vocal exercise you analyze what it's doing for your choir, you put it into the purpose, into the topic, and you memorize it. So when you're designing your choir warm-ups, you can use it. And by that, you get a whole range of things you can do for your choir warm-up. But we will do this together in the next video. I will give you every vocal exercise I know. Some of them are boring, some of them are very cool. Each and every one of them is very efficient, so you can relax, take in everything we talked about in this video, think about it, and then be prepared for the next video, which will come out next week, I promise. I will leave this topic and this video here. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and I really hope this year 2020 is being okay for you. And for now, conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you next time. Bye!